I heard you are dating an Indian guy. I said yes, and so you know there are two types of Indians. You know the fair ones tend to be richer, and the dark ones tend to be poorer. So which kind is your boyfriend? I was just so so so. Why are they like tagged to that? Term wife beater and like Indians are wife yeah, beaters. Yeah, correct. Filipinos are also wife beater one. <laughs> yeah, it's not a race yeah. thing, right? There was um, this time where there was a gathering uh, with older generation also, like at a friend's house, and then there were a lot of aunties and uncles. And so I heard you are dating an Indian guy. I said yes, and so. So, you know there are two types of Indians. There is the very fair Indian and the very dark Indian. Uh, you know, the fair ones tend to be richer and the dark ones tend to be poorer. So, which kind is your boyfriend? I was just so... And then I tried not to answer and then came the, the, the joke. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard this one. So which one is more dangerous, the Indian man, the Indian lawyer, or the snake? Yeah. You, yeah you heard oh, one, you've yeah. heard that one yeah. before? Yeah. 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 So this is one of those jokes where you're not supposed to answer, right? I mean, because <laughs> there's no answer. Yeah, either way, right? But so. what was it trying to say about Indian men? Like when you compare the Indian man to the snake, what, what, was, what were they trying to say? The snake is um, poisonous. The snake is cunning and uh, will lie to you and trick you. So, so think, very untrustworthy. Yeah. So I think those were some of the things that, that was being implied and asking me if I knew what I was doing and why must do this, you know? Why must they Indian men? Yeah, And why? of all Indian men, no fair one, you go and choose that one. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, how, did, how did that make you feel? I'm surrounded by cackling and I'm surrounded by people who are um, trying to be well-meaning in some way. They think that they're looking out for me, right? What can I really say in that moment? They're not my peers, so I just kind of took it. But I did just minus it from my brain, I think, as much as I can. I just ignore it. So I learned that I just have to approach all these kind of situations in a very calm manner and to try and change them and change their perspective and change their mind is really something that I won't be able to do. I kind of always felt that I can't change the, their perspective. Mm. And so for me, I have to just accept it and I hope that they in time will see the person that I am with and see the goodness of that relationship more than the skin colour. So yeah, I think I'm hearing you feel very powerless in that situation and very powerless to react because if you do react, you're too sensitive or you do react and then they get upset and they are, they are your elders, so you can't speak up. Um, it's strange that you married an Indian man because my husband is also Indian. My mom wasn't very happy that I married an Indian man for the same reason because he's dark. Um, and I, like, I think there were years where I was fighting my mom and I was saying like, no, he's a, he's a great man, you know, he's, he's a nice person, he's so kind to me, he's so gentle to me. And then she couldn't see past anything else but the skin colour. And because I fought through that and I told her that he was really that kind of person, I think finally when we said that, okay, we're going to get married, I think in a way she came to an acceptance. And also because he has sort of proved himself that he can take care of me, you know, in a strange way. But like she was quite okay with it. Uh, and so when the marriage came, um, we actually compromised. So the first week was an Indian marriage, so she was there. <laughs> uh, we did the actual Indian rituals. And the following week, we did the Catholic ritual. Because I understand that we, it's two different cultures, two different races, two different backgrounds coming together. And I wanted to prove them that, like, proof, like, you know, really wanted to prove them and say, like, so what if we are different race, you know? Like, we can still make the marriage work. That's more important, right? Yeah, so it was a hard battle, I would say. There are times even where, like, you know what you said about the snake and the Indian? And I'm like, is it really true? You know, they even say, like, like oh, they are, they are, you know, the term wife beater. And then I'm like, but don't all races have their issues too? So, so why are they, like, you know, tagged to that 
term wife beater and like Indians are wife yeah, beaters. Yeah, correct. And and sometimes I even fight that, you know, with my parents. It's like, hey, I mean, can I say this? Um, Filipinos are also wife beater one. <laughs> like I've seen cases of Chinese people also beating their wife one and abusing their wife one. So. You know, it's not a race yeah, thing. It's not a race yeah. thing, your, right? Your, your racial identity yeah. doesn't make you more of a white beater. Correct. Like it's so hard for them to see past their race, mm. and and so I fought. Like, I just fought through, and we've been married for almost three years now, and she has come to a full acceptance. My father-in-law has re really been kind as well. He's been trying to understand my culture, my mom's culture, my dad's culture. And what I'm hearing is really what we can do about it. And for you, you stood and you fought against the, race, the, the overt racism faced by your own family, within your own family. And you stood up for what you believed in, yeah. that, that race, the colour doesn't really matter. Yeah, doesn't and what really matters is whether he loves you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that story. It's really inspiring. I think, like, personally, I feel like casual racism is very, like, normalised in Singapore. I was just chilling, minding my own business in the council room, and then my house captain was sitting next to me and he says, you know, I wish I was Malay. Then I don't have to work so hard and I'll be more relaxed. What? Yeah. And I was, I was like, I was just minding my own business and I was like, okay. Like, how am I supposed to respond to that? Yeah. So, and then, um, implied is the fact that I am one of those individuals who underperforms. It was just very frustrating because, like I said, like Jerry said, um, it's very difficult to speak up in that moment because you just, you're, 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 you're a kid in school and you don't want to be ostracised, you don't want to be left out of the jokes, you don't want to be excluded from council events, you know, like the unofficial ones that they plan, you know, chalets and stuff, you don't want to be the all one out. So, I kind of just went along with it, even if it was at the expense of like my racial identity. So it kind of affects how you see yourself also, am I hearing you right? Definitely. And it's very disheartening because like, it makes me feel like that association between underperforming and being Malay is always like there. Yeah. So I try to dissociate from my race to assimilate into the majority yeah. race. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's like, no, I have to work even harder to do well in my studies and like show that, hey, I'm not underperforming. Yeah, that kind of thing. It is very detrimental to my like self worth or so that. Yeah, it really hurts your sense of self. And if you were to do it all over again, what would you want to? Would you? How would you stand up for yourself? I think I can't say for sure, because I'm a very emotional person, and I feel like if I were to stand up for myself, so I would just like break down in tears and then you know they would say oh you're just being a sensitive girl you know there's that intersectionality where yes. I'm a minority and a female so I'm just being emotion an emotional wreck mm -hmm. but I think if I were to go back in time I would probably sit them down and I like, have an honest conversation hey what you're saying and doing hurts my feelings yeah. I feel like they do have the capacity to understand and empathize but it's just in that moment, they didn't really have anything else to talk about with me, so they just played up my race when I was trying to downplay my race. Yeah. So, like, I'm hearing from you that it comes from a place of ignorance, and they don't know better. They don't know that it actually hurts your feelings. They thought it's fun, they thought it's funny, and they thought it's okay because it, it, it does no harm. It's, you know, um, Ashura is my friend, and she's okay being called that way. Am I hearing you right? Yeah, I would think that I'm giving them like the benefit of the doubt in the sense that oh it's okay you don't know many better but like I would think that they do know better because like the one guy who always made racist jokes towards me he always qualified like oh it's okay my friends in my previous school were all Malay so like oh, yeah, they, 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 it's, it's, famous, it's yeah. like that's why I'm so it's so second nature to me to make all these jokes you know but then he, when he says these jokes, only after in front of all of our friends, he would like go to me in the side, like outwardly. If, imagine you're my my counselors, and he would go to me like, Asha, are you okay with it? If you're not okay, you can just tell me, you know, honestly. Then I'll, I'll and like I'll be like in that awkward position where I'm like mm. the butt of the joke, and I don't want to be. And it's making the majority laugh, so I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's okay. And like it's a very difficult situation to be in because I I want to say something, but. I don't want to be excluded. Like what yeah. they, all of us want to be is to belong. Yeah, to belong, to be part of it. You don't want to look like you're being too sensitive or you're trying to make a mountain out of a molehill. Yeah. yeah, so it was very difficult. Uh. So you were not okay with it, but you felt pressured that you had to say, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, and that was like 
how it was for most of my schooling years, whenever I faced any microaggressions or jokes. Yeah. Anybody has a reaction to that story? How, how does that make you feel, hearing, hearing Ashura's story? Angry. <laughs> um, I think quite shocked that in our education system, this is all just glossed over, you know, as just everyday fun, or it's just stuff that happens, and that excuse of like, hey, I know all my friends are that way. Like, yeah, it doesn't mean that you were a good friend to them either, mm. right? Yeah. <laughs> So you've been a bad friend for how many years now? <laughs> wow, I just... But the funny thing is, I don't think they realise they're a bad friend. Yeah. Yes, because I think it's been generations of Singaporeans making fun of each race, right? Yeah. I think we grow up listening to all the adults also, thinking, making these jokes and we think it's okay. But I can understand the, the stress you must have felt in that moment. Because you wanted to belong. I wanted to fit in and, and maybe that's why we just, we just brush it aside even though it hurts. And maybe today we are coming together and saying, no, that's not okay. It's not okay. Yeah, I don't think it's okay anymore. Yeah. And maybe that's the message that we want to tell our viewers, basically. It's not okay. Even though we might say it's okay, but really it's not okay inside. I thought, for me, I thought we were quite forward in like ra ra racial kind of, this kind of you know, practices, but I'm, I'm guessing it's not true then, <laughs> you know, like, although we do so much in Singapore to talk about racial harmony, but, you know, it's all these small things that just like what you say, you know, just go by. And then you wonder, you really wonder, like, have we really made progress? Because yeah. I, I thought we made progress. And I think that's an interesting point also, because a lot of people use the line of argument that we are racially harmonious and therefore these jokes shouldn't affect us. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so when Racial Harmony Day comes, all my council Chinese friends would go immediately message me, Ashra, can I borrow your costumes for Racial Harmony Day? And like, yeah, and I would always just be like, oh yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But like, that was the only time when they came to me and like were nice to me and like, oh, okay. thanks, your, oh, your clothes are so pretty. And like, yeah, so it was, it's so superficial. Mm -hmm. And like, people are playing up the fact that we are racially harmonious so often that they ignore everything else that's like ugly about it. That it's superficial, that there's still racism and people just don't see that. One day a year, we dress up in each other's costumes yeah. and we say, hey, you know what, we yeah, are racially we harmonious. Are racial harmonious. But in, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, Ashura is sharing about microaggressions happening all the time. Have you experienced something similar? Share with us your story in the comments below. And don't forget to like and share the video. Click the subscribe button below to follow our conversation.